Uh, actually, Sarah, let's go to a serious issue. I understand in the party room today, uh, you called for Hizbut Tahir to be banned. That is this uh, organization uh, that is not currently prescribed as a terrorist organization by ASIO. You would like to see them prescribed as such. Uh, why did you put that forward and what kind of response did you get from the Attorney General? And why hasn't the government done it already? It's Seriously. been in power since 2013. Well, uh, this morning in the party room, Christina and Peter, I raised the very serious issue of the conduct of Hitzbat to hear. A constituent of mine raised uh, with me that on their website last week, they made some very concerning comments about uh, encouraging people to uh, rise up in the name of Allah to engage in jihad. Now, there are different def definitions of jihad, uh, including, of course, the holy war. I did not like the tone of this. It was very, very concerning, and I raised it with the Attorney General and with the Prime Minister this morning. I must say I'm very pleased that the Attorney General did actually raise these issues with um, Duncan Lewis, uh, the head of ASIO, excuse me, just got an earpiece issue, uh, last week, and the Attorney has now indicated that he will be convening a briefing with coalition MPs. But this is the same organisation you might recall in April, the women of Hitzbat Tahir uh, were having a meeting discussing how Muslim husbands were permitted to beat or hit their wives. Uh, and of course, this is the same organisation that called for mm. former Muslims to be executed. So uh, we have seen a history, a recent history of very concerning statements made by this organisation. And it's certainly worth having a very uh, serious look at whether they should be banned. The Attorney General uh, also said in his briefing after the party room meeting that uh, he had just last week asked ASIO for a professional assessment on his but to, to hear and that it doesn't rise to the definition of terrorism. It, to your mind, do you think that we need to contemplate changing how we define what is a terrorist organization or do you think that ASIO needs to have another look? Look, ASIO is continuing to look at all organisations and, of course, we have uh, made record funding investment in our security agencies and in our intelligent agencies. And, uh, of course, ASIO has been part of countering some 12 planned attacks on Australian soil. So since we've been elected, we have a very, very good record. This is an issue we take extremely seriously. But ASIO, of course, Christina, has a continuing obligation, which it does fulfil, to monitor these organisations. I'm very pleased that this was raised by the Attorney-General last week and ASIO will, of course, continue to look at this organisation. But it is very, very concerning. Uh, they use these words, uh, jihad, in, in a very, I think, um, uh, you know, they're weasel words in my, in my view. Uh, the, the intention of what they're saying is quite clear. It is very, very concerning and I do think we need to look very, very seriously at whether this organisation should be banned. I don't ask this as a flippant question, I ask it as a genuine question, but what about, this is a debate of course that we had decades and decades ago in this country, but what about banning the Communist Party? Now they're not a terrorist organisation, but the very definition of the Communist Party, it believes in overthrowing our democracy. Now this was Robert Menzies' theory, but of course he didn't win in the end on this one. But frankly, I can see where he's coming from. I can see where the United States is coming from in having banned the Communist Party. Its whole raison d'etre, if it were to get elected, would be to unwind the very democratic institutions that we believe are central to what we represent as Australia. Why shouldn't they be banned? Peter, I'm not actually aware that the Communist Party ran in the last federal election. I don't think that they did. Uh, and certainly I'm not aware of any statements made by anyone who purports to be a member of that organisation which would uh, constitute terrorism. I mean, there is a high threshold, as there should be. I mean, we are a nation that believes strongly in freedom of speech, but not in hate speech and not perhaps in the sort of speech that we have seen from this particular organisation. Uh, this is uh, very, very concerning. It's very alarming. And as I say, I'm very pleased that the attorney um, has already raised this with the head of ASIO and will be convening a, a briefing with coalition MPs. Uh, we need to monitor these organisations very, very closely. Uh, we've seen, uh, of course, the horrific events in Manchester. Uh, it's mm. very, very concerning what we are seeing around the world and we have to be vigilant at all times. You've, you've mentioned a concern that you have about the use of the word jihad, completely and utterly understandable. Do you think that it's a, a misuse or unfortunate that someone like Peter Dutton has talked about, you know, the jihad on 
the media, or that the media has rather on the government? Uh, is, that, is that sort of phraseology best left to, to one side? No, not at all. I mean, we are a nation which uh, strongly supports free speech, and I think Peter was using that, of course, in a particular context. What I'm concerned about, Peter, is the context of extremist Muslim organisations using this word in a way that denotes some sort of holy war, that, uh, you know, encouraging people to execute others. Uh, there, in fact, is in this organisation's draft constitution, Article 7.3, a particular provision which provides that if a Muslim leaves his or her religion, then uh, they should be executed. Now, this is being stated by this organisation here in Australia. I mean, that is very alarming. It's very violent. It's uh, horrific, these sorts of suggestions. And uh, as a, a government, I'm very, very pleased that we are taking them very seriously.